Hey there folks, my name is Peter and welcome to New Tool Tuesday. Today we're gonna to sit down and spend some time with the Milwaukee M12 Fuel Brushless Die Grinder. Now I picked this thing up a few weeks ago and unboxed it as part of a recent video. Check it out if you haven't already. I've had a chance to use it a little bit, but what I wanna to do today was actually put it through its paces in a separate video, as well as talk through some of its features and functionality. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. As always, if you're into EDC tools or do-it-yourself projects, be sure to subscribe to the channel. I think you'll really enjoy it. So first things first, let's just talk tool, body, et cetera. Now, this thing is pretty long in the hand, and the first thing you may notice if you come from an air tool background uh, is that this thing is a little beefier than the die grinders you're used to seeing from air hoses. And officially, from a dimension point of view, we are looking at about eight and a half, eh, call it eight and three quarter inches tall. All to say the ergonomics of this will be slightly different than what you're used to if you come from the air tools. In the box, Milwaukee includes two wrenches. You've got a half inch and an 11 sixteenths uh, for changing out your implement on the arbor, right? So the half inch is gonna go here, they've got a little cutout, and then you're gonna use the 11 sixteenths on this nut here to tighten or loosen as you see fit. Now, I already have a piece connected on here, and for my purposes, this is what I'm gonna use basically forever. I bought this for a very specific reason. I've gotten into more tool restoration as of late. In fact, here's a recent restoration that I'm quite proud of. This is a Made in USA vise by Littlestown. And I'll, I'll throw some before pictures up here for you all. Uh, when I got this thing, presumably somewhere out of my grandfather's garage, uh, it was as rusted as rusted could be. Uh, it certainly wasn't the green that it once was, but hopefully we were able to color match it pretty well. Uh, and I did all this work mostly before I got this tool. I, I got it in the middle of this restoration, so I was able to do, use it a little bit. And what I'm positive in is that this thing works so much better than everything else I had been using previously. Uh, and I just can't wait to put it to use again for another restoration, which is what we're gonna do here today. Now I'll get to the item that we're gonna restore a little bit later in the video, but first let's spend a little bit more time talking about the tool itself. So it has four speed settings, 10,000, 15,000, 20,000, and 24,500, all easily selectable here on the back. The trigger has a safety latch, so you can't just depress this, right? So if you throw it in a tool bag or you have it somewhere, you're, you're not gonna uh, accidentally fire this thing. Instead, it's got this little latch here, almost like a, like a fence post latch. So you're gonna lift it up and now you can pull it back. In terms of variable speed, you do have a little bit of control. So if I'm nice and soft. You could sort of see that. Now, it's not super fine grain control, right? So if that's what you're after, there may be a different product. And truthfully, I don't, I don't have a recommendation. Maybe somebody in the comments will. Uh, but just bear in mind, you do have some control with respect to variable speed, uh, or variable speed rather, but not 100%. The last major feature on the tool, which you may have seen, is the light. Now for me, the light in and of itself, not all that useful, of course, if you're using this thing, uh, I don't know, underneath a vehicle somewhere, you're knocking rust off, perhaps you'll get a little bit more use out of it. But of course, the light, when we kind of go top to bottom here, it's not hitting the front of the tool, but uh, it's probably hitting just enough so that your workpiece can be illuminated. And of course, with all the Milwaukee tools, has your battery indicator here on the palm. Now, one thing I will say is that when I use this for the first time, battery seems to drain pretty quickly. This is an M12 after all, so that's something we'll have to bear in mind. Today, when we test it, the battery we're gonna make use of is this 2.5 amp hour high output battery from Milwaukee. Now, interestingly enough, on the Home Depot website, they have two versions of this tool. Actually, they have a couple more, but only two that are, I think, really interesting. So they have the tool by itself for $219. Then they have the tool plus this battery for $199. Now, when I mentioned this in the unboxing, somebody left a comment and said, well, the version you got for $199 with the battery is not brushless. The $219 is brushless. And I said, I mean, maybe I missed something, but it turns out, no. This is, in fact, the M12 Fuel. It is brushless. So, for whatever reason, on Home Depot's website right now, you can get the tool plus the battery for $20 less than just the tool by itself. Now, I don't have any affiliate links, but I will put links to Home Depot uh, in the description if you are so inclined. 
Now let's talk a little bit about attachments before we try to put this thing to use. When you buy the tool itself, even if you buy it with the battery, it does not come with any attachments. You have to buy all of those separately. I will have a link in the description down below to a pack that I bought on Amazon uh, because it's what I'm going to use this tool for most. And that is for the sanding discs. So when you buy it on Amazon, you get a kit of three and you've got your coarse, medium, and fine. And these are fantastic for knocking rust and other buildup off of your metal. Now on Home Depot's website, they do sell a separate kit which includes pads very similar to these as well as these flap wheels. So if you're looking to shape the metal and be a little bit more aggressive, you could do stuff like this. They also have this McGaffer, which I believe is mostly for taking paint and stuff off. Uh, I have used one of these on a drill before that I bought at Home Depot. Uh, for my purposes, I didn't find it to be uh, that effective, but I'm sure there's a use case that I haven't totally yet discovered yet, so bear that in mind. Then you can get just regular old sanding discs. In this case, I've got a 36, a 60, an 80, and a 120. And then finally, you've got your buffing wheel. What's nice about all these attachments is that they're quick lock. So the piece that I have in the machine right now, right, that I tightened down with the wrenches has a little locking mechanism in it. And if we take one of these discs, you slide it in there, and then it just sort of clicks into place, right? So you can go from coarse to medium to fine pretty quickly. So now that we've covered the attachments and the tool itself, let's talk about what we're going to work on today. So this is an old anvil that again I got out of my grandfather's garage. Uh, that's sort of a recurring theme here. Uh, my grandfather built every house that he ever lived in uh, and actually the other day he said to me, you know, I've built three houses and you have more tools than I do. So I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but uh, certainly he enjoys a lot of what I'm doing and I enjoy it as well. Uh, so anyway, this anvil uh, of course, I am not a uh, metal worker per se. I don't, uh, I don't have a forge and nothing with really which to, to make use of this, but uh, it is made in the USA. I have no idea what the brand is because I don't see it listed on here. Uh, and of course, this thing has some rust and some buildup. And so we're gonna turn this into more of a showpiece try to get this all sanded down, buff out the top, make a sort of a mirror finish up here, and then I wanna repaint the remainder of it. To be clear, I don't think I'm forfeiting anything in terms of future use. Uh, if I go with like a mirror finish up here, it's just not necessarily what you would find welders and metal workers uh, doing with stuff like this, but I like to have a little bit of fun and really I wanna put this tool through its paces. So what I'm gonna do is start with the coarse uh, sanding disc pad on here, go over the whole thing. Then we're gonna switch to the medium, go over the whole thing. And then the fine, I may just do on the top here. It really depends how much paint I'm able to get off with the first two. Uh, and then once we're done with the fine, we'll hit this with some polish and our buffing pad, and then we'll paint it. Uh, and I think it's gonna look super cool. As always, when you're working with stuff like this, you definitely want your safety goggles, right? If any of these pieces happen to fly off and hit you in the eye, you're gonna have a pretty bad time. Uh, and then I like to wear some gloves just because it makes your hands awfully dirty. Now, like I said, the one thing that we definitely want to keep an eye on is the battery level. The last time I used this, it drained through that first battery pretty quickly. Now, this is, again, the high output, so we may find that it works a little bit better, lasts a little bit longer, uh, but certainly at the conclusion of all of this work that we're about to do, I'm going to report back on the battery level because I think it's important you know how long it's likely to last. <laughs> So after only a few seconds of the tool, you can already start to see some of the shine being brought back to this implement. Now one area that I'm not super well prepared in with respect to PPE is any sort of air uh, filtration mechanism. So for now, I have a fan over here because this is kicking up all sorts of rust and stuff you don't wanna be breathing. And then from our COVID days, I've got a Buffalo Bills mask. So I'm gonna do my best with this and then I'll report back as we switch pads and See where we land. All right, so I just got done hitting the anvil for, I don't know, probably 15, 20 minutes. 
Uh, what I did for the top is I actually switched to one of these flat discs because once you took off that first layer of paint, uh, you could see it was, there, there, there's some pretty deep scratches. So I used the flap disc to try to get deeper. Uh, and then I went from coarse, medium to fine on the abrasive pads. And I think it revealed a pretty good shine. Now, like I said, I'm gonna hit this with a little bit of polish and then we're just gonna paint the whole thing. As far as the tool goes, right? Cause that's really what this is all about. As you can see, we're at one bar left. Uh, and this again is from our 2.5 high output battery. Uh, so if you were gonna keep going with this, this battery's gonna run out pretty soon. Uh, I did most of the work at 15,000 RPM. I did switch to 20,000 with the flap disc, but all to say, uh, you're not gonna get the same, you know, sort of performance here as you would out of the air-based machine. Uh, but everything's a trade-off, right? Instead of having to lug around or, or wire up a big old air system, you just have some batteries, which is cool. Of course, this stuff makes a mess. I don't know how well you can see on the video, but uh, definitely makes a mess. And like I said, I am underprepared from a PPE perspective, so. Let's get this polished up, throw some paint on it and call it a day. I'm thinking for polishing, we'll just kick it down to 10,000 RPM. And then I'm gonna use this till the battery dies. Now here's a question for the viewers. When you do the polish like this, do you have a separate polishing pad that you're using to take it off? Or do you just get a rag like this? Let me know. This thing's definitely Pretty shiny. If you stare at it, you might burn your eyes. Like the upcoming solar eclipse. Actually, when this video gets posted, that will have been in the past. But if you're in the path of totality, or if you were in the path of totality, let me know how that went for you. So it's pretty shiny. I really like the way it feels and looks. Obviously, it's maintaining a lot of its original um, allure because you've got the scratches and dents and dings from banging on this thing with a hammer. So uh, we didn't lose any of that. We just and brought it to the surface. Of course, I've got my painting mat here that I did when I, uh, when I painted the vise, that's why it's green. Uh, if you haven't checked out that YouTube short, I think you'll really enjoy it. I mean, the before on that thing, night and day difference in terms of what we had and what we got to, so check that out if you haven't already. Now, I definitely think that there are better ways to shake up paint cans, so if you have a recommendation for something I should buy and maybe unbox in the future, let me know. Uh, but I think we're good to go for now. The last time I used this paint was one of my very, very first TikToks at the time, now it's a YouTube short. This tool would have come in so handy on that project, so I'll link it so you all can check it out. But uh, yeah, obviously this will only take a moment for you all, it'll take a couple hours for me, I'm gonna let this dry and whatnot, but I've got our top covered, so we're not gonna lose any of our illustrious shine. Get this painted and give you my final thoughts on the tool. All right, folks, so thank you so much for watching today's video. Uh, the project, I, I, I truthfully don't have the patience. This is not completely dry, so if you picked it up on the video, that's why. But I think it looks super cool. Still just as functional as it was, but we brought it back to life. In terms of the tool itself, uh, I love this thing, truthfully. Uh, like I said, the battery is something to bear in mind. If you're gonna be doing longer projects, you're probably gonna want a bigger capacity battery on this thing. Uh, but for what it is and its size, I don't think you can go wrong. Milwaukee does make this in a straight version as well as the 90, so that's another option as well, depending on your use case. Uh, I plan to use this thing super often. Got a whole drawer full of those pads. Like I said, I'll have a link to that down in the description below. Thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you on the next video.